when we change the government. The Honourable Mark Mitchell. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I, I just I just want to open by saying that um, actually I, I personally am very proud to be a Kiwi. Um, I was very fortunate that uh, that the Prime Minister appointed me the Minister of Defence, which has allowed me to travel and represent our country offshore um, in the last six weeks. And it's reminded me um, just how lucky we are with what we have back here in New Zealand. And um, and I'm proud to be a Kiwi. And actually. Um, when it comes down to it, we do care about each other. We do look after one another. I, my own family uh, suffered a, a tragedy uh, when we lost my brother Sean uh, to mental illness. And one of the things that I've worked on very hard myself from that date um, was trying to create more awareness in a police service, because at the time I was in the police service. We've come a long, long way. Trying to quite, uh, create more awareness uh, in our communities in terms of being uh, more accepting and understanding that um, a mental illness or depression is, is no different to a broken arm or a broken leg. It's just that um, it's not as visible. And we've come a long way. We've, got, um, we've, oh, now, we've now got uh, mental health facilities that, uh, that are in the community, that are providing services to our people in the community so they don't have to leave the community that they feel safe and happy in. And 10 years, 20 years ago, we didn't have that. We've got a, a mental health service down at uh, North Shore Hospital that I'm proud of, that delivers a very good service. Yeah, yes, we should always be looking at ways to do better. Yes, we can make improvements, and we've got to keep making improvements. But as a country, we should be quite proud um, at how far we've come. Uh, on, on that note, um, Mr Speaker, I just wanted to uh, just point to four key elements in the budget. And can I acknowledge Minister Joyce um, and his first budget in delivering what I think is a budget for New Zealand, for everyone to be able to participate and to be able to um, enjoy the fact that, yes, we're a small country down at the bottom of the world. Yes, we have to engage, we have to trade and engage in, in a wider global community, but we actually do very well. We're actually seeing good growth in our economy. And actually, when we have good growth in the economy, that's what allows us to make choices. That's what actually gives us the income. That's what gives us the revenue as a country to be able to invest into the areas that we need to invest in, to be able to assist and support our growth, and assist and support and allow us to realise our own aspiration as a country. I just want to point to the 3.9 billion in New Zealand's uh, investment over four years in New, Ze New Zealand's health sector. And my own electorate of Rodney is very well served by North Shore Hospital, which is down in Takapuna. That's a hospital that I used myself as a kid growing up. And I have to say that, um, that if we had to go to the A&E room, we probably understood that we were facing a, anything from a two to a four hour wait uh, before we were able to actually be taken through and seen by a doctor. I can say now, I can say now, well, that was my experience when we used uh, North Shore Hospital. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what the members' experience was, but I'm just telling you that was my own personal experience of having used the hospital. And, and, I, and I can say now, I can, I can with great confidence, that every single one of my constituents that has to access the support and the services at the North Shore Hospital comes away raving about the staff and raving about the service that they get. And I'm actually really proud of our North Shore Hospital. I'm proud of the staff there, and I'm proud of the services that are delivered to the people of my electorate in Rodney. 1.1 billion for schools and early childhood centres. Again, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Walworth, um, Walworth is growing and will continue to grow, and it's needed uh, some pretty major investment, not just into rebuilding, for example, the Walworth School uh, on the junior side and the senior side but also quite a big expansion plan to be able to absorb the growth that we're going to experience up there over the next five years. That's happened. That's happened because you've had a principal and staff, you've had a chair of the Board of Trustees, and a Board of Trustees that have worked extremely well with the Ministry and have been supported by the Associate Minister at the time, uh, Nikki Kay. And we have seen a world-class school, uh, certainly the junior side, we've already been up there and opened that, and now there's work starting on the, on the senior side. 
We've just seen an announcement uh, this week that Aru will be um, getting a new primary school. We need that because we're growing. That growth, uh, of course, comes with challenges. We have to invest in services. We have to keep up to date in terms of the development of our infrastructure, and we are, as a country, catching up on that. Without a doubt, I think everyone would, would agree that we've got decades of, um, of underinvestment, and we're catching up with that now with some big, significant uh, um, uh, uh, investment in infrastructure. Uh, but we're getting a new school. We're getting new roads. We've, uh, we've, start, we've seen the work now that has begun on our Puhoi to Wellsford uh, road of national significance. Uh, that's a $700 million investment. Um, everyone is, every, $700 million. Everyone's extremely excited about that. The work has already begun. And that is going to bring Northland, not just North Rodney, but it's going to bring Northland even closer in terms of having access to the economy in our main port uh, in Auckland. $1.2 billion for law and order. Um, as the Associate Minister of Justice, I have got the responsibility for our Youth Crime Action Plan. We've seen $46.9 million um, that's been directly allocated uh, to reduce uh, burglary and youth offending. And you've already heard some very good announcements from the Deputy Prime Minister around a coordinated effort from the police in terms of uh, increased foot patrols. Everyone likes seeing a beat cop out on the beat. Uh, they've got a dedicated task force combined with other measures that actually shopkeepers are going to be able to use to make, their, uh, to make the shop less of it or make it target harden it so it becomes less desirable for these, um, for these offenders to go in there and actually try and commit a robbery. We've got $803 million over four years for other social services. Can I just come to defence very quickly, please, Mr Speaker? $982 million in funding boost for defence. This is critically important. The other thing that's become very obvious to me as the new incoming minister is the outstanding work that our New Zealand Defence Force personnel do, not just offshore, not just globally, but here in New Zealand. And there's been no clearer example of that when we've had to deal with, that, with our own um, challenges and struggles around the Kaikoura earthquake or the Christchurch earthquake, adverse weather events, and our Defence Force personnel are always there to just quietly respond and do whatever needs to be done to make sure that the people, that um, the victims, uh, have got the services and the support that they need. We see what they do offshore in our own backyard, the Asia Pacific, and and we've got one of our um, offshore patrol boats up in Fiji at the moment. I was talking with the Fijian minister uh, in Shangri-La. I can't tell you how much they appreciate having us up there, training them, working alongside them, and giving them a capability to actually look after their own economic zone. And I think, as of yesterday, they had, um, thank you, they patrolled about 2,000 square miles. They'd, they'd boarded about 18 vessels, um, and they were making a real impact in terms of policing their own um, economic zone. Can I acknowledge our new troops up in uh, the troops that have just come home from our operation in Taji and the ones that have just arrived and the work that they're doing up there that is internationally recognised as being critically important in the fight against ISIS. They've trained over 22,000 Iraqi troops now um, who have left our camp after our training uh, are far more effective, are far more skilled a far more a, a, a units that are far more aware of uh, their rules of engagement and their fire discipline, which is important, because that's how they generate the support of the communities that they're liberating from ISIS. Um, so I want to acknowledge them and the work that they're doing. To give you an indication of the success that we're having up there, uh, the Iraqi troops have been able to liberate over 60,000 square kilometres of territory that was held by ISIS. That's meant that 1.7 million Iraqis are back in their homes. And 250,000 children are back at school again. All as a result of a contribution that our people are making up there at Camp Taji. So I want to acknowledge them, uh, both the people that have come home and our troops that have just uh, deployed up there. I want to acknowledge um, David Shear and the work that he's doing in Sudan. He's got a big job, a tough job. And he's come to us and he's asked for some more support. And we've got, a, um, we've got an NZDF um, officer that will be heading up there shortly to go up there, get on the ground with him, get alongside him and see what else we can do to help him up there. I want to acknowledge the four staff that we have up there currently, two bases in um, Juba and another couple at, uh, in some outstations. Uh, 
they are doing an outstanding job. I want to acknowledge our 35 um, Army engineers that were, um, that were up in the Sinai recently. Uh, I see I've run out of time, but thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker. Chris Hipkins. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, a few years ago, the National Party had the song by the feelers, Stand Up and Be Counted, uh, as, their, as their election motto, and oh, their election theme song. I thought this year, listening to Stephen Joyce, they would perhaps choose as good as it gets, because that seems to be their attitude to the current state of the country. This is as good as it gets. Forget about aspirations.